Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Soundpost Sessions. My name is Tim Goldsrud. I'm the executive producer of the Soundpost Sessions, and uh, it's great to see you all here tonight. Um, I'd like to say thank you to a few people and organizations. First off, I'd like to say thank you to Longmont Public Media, who are our hosts here tonight in the, in the TV studio here. If you don't know about Longmont Public Media, uh, LPM um, is a media makerspace here in downtown Longmont. So that means if you're a member here, you get access to not only this studio space, but there's a uh, recording studio downstairs, there's a podcast studio, there's editing stations where you can work on video projects, photography projects, all kinds of things. Um, and actually, if you'd like to learn a little bit more about that, uh, next week, I believe it's Thursday evening, there will be a downtown Longmont Creative District happy hour right here. And uh, that will be a great time to get a tour of the building and learn a little bit more about the things that happen here at LPM. So if you're interested in creative things here in downtown Longmont, then maybe think about checking that out. Um, I'd also like to say thank you to Dryland Distillers, who are hosting our VIP after party tonight. So that's a chance for us to go down the street to their lovely tasting room on Main Street and have some, have some drinks, hang out with the artists. Um, we still have a little bit of room actually tonight for the VIP party, so if you're interested in joining that and if you don't have a VIP ticket yet, you can uh, t check with the ticket desk out front and um, while you're there, you could say thank you to my lovely wife, Misty, who's working the ticket desk tonight. So uh, thanks, Misty, for doing that. I'd also like to say a big thanks to Zach right over there running sound for us tonight and TG running cameras for us tonight. Um, it takes a, takes a big group of people to pull off these events and I'm very grateful to have everyone's help and assistance for this. Um, so this is the, will be the first, first uh, time for the Teresa Storch Band being on the sound post sessions. Really excited to have them. Um, they've, they've got actually some other really great shows coming up uh, down in Denver towards the end of this month. They'll be playing also the Winter Walkabout coming up here in downtown Longmont um, the beginning of February. Um, I, they'll be playing at the Speakeasy, so you might think about checking them out there. And um, there's also, they're doing a show with Fox Feather, which is another band we've had here on the uh, Sound Post Sessions up in Fort Collins, and I believe that's February 18th. February 18th, yes. Um, so lo lots, of, lots of great opportunities to check out this band, which also, interestingly, everyone in the band is from Longmont. I just learned that tonight. So we have a, a real Longmont experience here tonight. So please join me in welcoming the Teresa Storch Band to the Sound Post Sessions. very honored to be here, really. Um, at least, I'm saying we. I assume you guys are. I am. Yeah. <laughs> um, these guys, Tim and Zach, they do such a great job of putting together this show. And uh, I've been wanting to play it for a while. I don't know. I finally was like, oh, I met Tim. Like, hey, we should actually, I want to I wanna play your show. So. I was in tune before. But I, I swore that this would be more of like a, a typical old school Teresa Storch show where I used to talk like a lot. So <laughs> you're gonna get some stories. Um, this first song, I, I used to live in Massachusetts. I don't know if anyone really knows that. Some people might. And I, uh, 
I lived in Cambridge in Somerville, and but I would go to, to Salem sometimes. Especially in October, it's kind of a cool time to go because the people are dressed in witch costumes. And anyway, I ended up at a psychic fair at the mall because that's where they have them in, in Salem. And, uh, this woman told me that uh, in my past lives, I lived in Paris and that I'd been a performer in, man in many lives, not just that one. But in that particular life in Paris, I was a can-can dancer. Massachusetts, I became, well, I got laid off from my day job and I became a busker. Do you guys know what a busker is? How many people do? Some, it's, it's, I know, like only a few people. It's a street performer. It's like official term for a street performer. 
So yes, I played in the subways in Boston and in Harvard Square. And this is a song about uh, someone I met one time that it kind of changed my life a lot doing that, like just kind of putting my music out in public on a street corner. It's a really weird thing to do. But the people that get drawn to you is, is beautiful and magical. So uh, I, uh, yeah, I had to write this song for sure. Kindergarten in two weeks. She'll talk to you if she's able when she shares. She smiles and shows her cheeks. Well, I am pleased to meet you at the She ate dinner at the table next to her.
Did you guys catch that like airport theme that he was doing? Oh my gosh. The train is arriving. The train? He literally recorded it. He recorded it at the airport one time. He got it right. He was doing it a little wrong before. Yeah. But, uh, but it was really this sweet little girl. She like literally like came up to me and she like snuck up to me. She's like, I like you. And ran away. And I was like, oh my God. I was like crying by the end. And she kept like coming back. Like mom's like, I, she had to say goodbye to you again. Anyway, so that's the cool stuff that happens when you are a busker. <laughs> when you get laid off from your job. But after that, I actually started driving and playing shows around the country. So I, uh, I was a touring artist for about eight years. Just me in my car. First it was a Pontiac Vibe, and then that got totaled. <laughs> and then it was a Matrix. And that got totaled a couple years ago. <laughs> nice, Chris, thanks. <laughs> That's Mr. Christopher Wright on the drums. Hey. He didn't total the car. He did not total my car, but that was adorable. Repo yeah. Man. Yeah. Repo Repo man. Man. That's another story. That's the second set. That's the second set. So, uh, so I used to drive and, and listen to a lot of music and um, ended up writing a song sort of inspired by a, a Daryl Scott song. If you know, he's a songwriter out of Nashville. Um, really great. And he had a song where the lyric is about being a happy man. And I thought I was thinking about my life as I was driving, and I ended up writing this song called Happy Girl.
basis on the electric guitar. He also happens to be my husband. Hus husband. Husband. It's kind of funny. We have a joke about this. I didn't know I'd ever really get married. I don't know. We just got married a couple years ago. We've been together like nine years. It's been nine years, especially. Between a girl and a man 
Thank you. So I'll give you the story of that one if you want it. It's not as interesting as you might think. <laughs> Check, get count of that. Your mother would like. You My to mother know would that like you to know that this story, this song, is not about me. <laughs> She's been saying that for years. People are gonna think something bad happened to you. She's so cute. Um, so it was a co-write. That is a co-write I wrote with my friend Kathy Briggs. We, we wrote it at the song school. It happens every August in Lyons. And um, it, uh, it actually came from a song prompt. It's not, so it's a story we heard. I mean, it wasn't either of our stories, but it was a story she knew about. Of, uh, a woman who'd had a fa an affair with her like, high school teacher as a, you know, when she was in high school. That was pretty horrible. Um, but it came from, if you want all the details, the song prompt was a quote. And the quote was, God may forgive you, but I never can. And the person who said that was Queen Elizabeth I. <laughs> and we have no idea why. Or who, I bet like she was talking to a suitor or someone, someone who you know, really pissed her off. <laughs> That's what I bet. It's probably the kitchen staff. Maybe, yeah, kitchen staff. Now I have to get back in tune. What are we playing next? Oh, yeah. What I burn. What I burn. So this is a good story, too. Anyone know Vance Gilbert? I'm, so, I'm sure some people here might know who Vance Gilbert is. He's a, he's a singer-songwriter in the folk world. And he's one of the few black gentlemen in that world. He's a dear, dear friend of mine, one of my mentors. I've known him for years. Um, he used to come to my shows and, like, pick me apart. You know, like, give me this feedback. Um, and uh, so he told this story. He, t he tells it often. Um, he's a he's a model airplane enthusiast, and he has like he loves to build them, lives to read about them, learn about them. He was on an airplane reading a book about airplanes from like World War II or some something like that, and he got pulled off the plane because he was a person of color reading a book about airplanes. And it just made me really like. What can I do? Like, how is the world still like this? And he's just the sweetest, kindest man, you know? Um, so, I wrote this song. I basically decided what, well, how to think about what do I want to do? What can I do about it as a singer-songwriter? This is what I do. I write songs. So...
gives me freedom to go where others aren't allowed in. I never had the need to fight, and now I stand up for our rights. Here I am, I demand we stop this spread of fear. Mr. Chad Mavis on the bass guitar and the harmony vocals, too. We're all tuning now. Tuning! Time. Okay, we're done. Okay. Good. Stop. I win. <laughs> You've always been faster than me at everything musical. <laughs> I, I used to do tuning races in college. No, tuning races. <laughs> tuning no. races. He's a professional tuner. Tuna races. Tuna, tuna races. Tuning races. Oh. <laughs> we have way too much fun sometimes when we're uh, rehearsals. So, so Peter has. You know, we host them at our house, and and Peter has like decided that it's it's always whiskey night when when we have dinner. <laughs> Recently. Recently. <laughs> I, on the other hand, I'll drink water usually. usually. <laughs> what a good girl. She's oh, a good girl. you know. In white, you know. Less, you oh, know. stop. <laughs> oh, God. I just love that I can finally have a reason to wear this dress. What, what are you trying to say, Teresa? Uh, no. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> See? See? I can't take him anywhere. Okay, this is just a fun song. Oh, no, I'm, I'm just about to play the wrong song. I was, I was like totally skipping. Okay, this is my song for this lovely man, actually, now that I realize it. <gasps> I did, I wrote, him, I wrote him a love song.
sweetie. Oh, you want, you, want, you want a kiss? Is that what you yeah. said, Suze? Okay. That was my sister. I can tell. <laughs> I can tell your voice. <laughs> there she is. Oh, now I can see you all. Hi. Look at your beautiful faces. Tony Perez. Hey, guys. How are you feeling? Okay, okay. Stop. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just give it. <laughs> All right, this is, um, we're going to do one more song and then probably take a little short break. And uh, I wrote this during, oh gosh, well, do you remember the Brock Turner case? This was like before Me Too almost, I started writing this song. And uh, this is kind of my, my reaction to, Basically, I wanted, I wanted a woman's side to be heard in general at that point and wrote this one. So, um, yeah, it's kind of hard to sing sometimes, but it's, it's an important one. So. hear you think it's just what people say I hear you man and nothing by it I heard you claim it's just how you were raised still I say it's not okay I'll ignore it to keep you at bay I won't react to keep my job I'll laugh along just hoping you'll go away Still I say it's not okay Yesterday
you so much. We're going to take a short, short break. we got a whole other set of music for you, so... Uh, don't yeah. nobody, don't know where. Don't go nowhere. Five minutes, yeah. If there's a bathroom downstairs, if you didn't know about it. Um, anything else I should announce? Uh, I've... We're back. Thanks for sticking around. Um, we'll just hit it with some music. Days. 
Tastefully? It's a, like a little kid with a new toy. Right? Funk, getting funky now. So secretly, I've always wanted a funk band. So this is one of those songs. I, I really became this like folk chick singer songwriter, but I was like, oh, but I love like funk and jam. So then I met Peter, and here we are like. We're creating a new genre. Sometimes we call it Jam Americana. Jam Americana. Jam Americana. I need a different kind of half for it. Yeah, but then someone said that's kind of like Jamaican American, like oh. Or Jamiroquai. Or Jamiroquai. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's not gonna stick. But it was a good try. Teresa Storch, everybody. Okay. <laughs> Take two. Retreating until 
There were two endings there. tune from that? Who knows? Probably. Probably. But that, you know, if you want the stories, I don't know. That one was just a night of too much drinking and hanging out. <laughs> hanging out with a guy I had a crush on. <laughs> That's all that one was about. Not really. Not much depth to that. Uh, but this one. Well. This next one was a songwriting challenge from a dear friend of mine, my good friend John Lynn. You probably don't know him. Maybe two or three people here know him. He lives in Washington, D.C. He was a roommate of mine for a while in Massachusetts, Somerville. Roomies forever, we say. We're still really good friends. And uh, he, gave me, he gave me this songwriting challenge. I guess he has a picture of St. Francis of Assisi on his wall. And, um, he said, he's, he's Episcopalian, actually. Close. <laughs> and uh, he said, let's write a song about St. Francis. I'm like, okay. I know nothing about St. Francis. So I looked him up. He was a pretty cool dude, from what I learned. He gave away like all his possessions. He'd been like a, a merchant, I think, like a tradesman or something like that, merchant guy. And um, just wanted to connect with God via being a good person and giving away his stuff. and connecting with people. So yeah, this is the Ballad of St. Francis. When sadness goes Spell my greed and gave it all to someone else and me. Would hatred disappear if I planted the seed and gave my love to those who made me bleed? And I'm so tired. Pain. No one understands my need, my need for change. Face of God, could I see the face of God? 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 Could I see the face
Could I see the face of God? about when I sing that song I'm always like yeah dude like, like I really want to be that way too that's really the you know I get to live that that's the cool thing about singing songs you get to live it every time you're singing these words so. the next one is totally different sometimes we call it Teresa Storch session sets are like musical whiplash Something totally different. <laughs> what if I told you then that I loved you? If I went back in time and told you then that I loved you. Could I make you mine? City. Because you never ever know 
brought an electric guitar. Oh my gosh. That's the only song. We figured this isn't like an acoustic listening room. You don't want to hear me wailing on the electric guitar. You want to hear him wailing on the electric guitar. But, uh, all. Oh, but now, am I still in tune? Let's check. Oh, close. This is a good guitar. I should know. I bought it for myself. Yeah. I should know. So the story goes, <laughs> we were playing at Nisi's, the old Nisi's. And uh, she was playing the previous guitar that I bought for her. Yeah, I was playing this other guitar, and I broke a string. This was his backup guitar. And uh, I played the rest of this, the show with this, and I was like, oh my god, this is way easier to play, and really nice guitar. <laughs> this is nice. This is nice. So, I never gave it back. True story. He, borrow, he borrows it sometimes, though. So. I let him borrow it. I let him borrow it. Okay. I'm good. Everything's a mess Who knows what could happen next is made, wealth is obtained, but things always change. The whole country's full from sheer economic weight. Leaving behind a world to learn from our mistakes.
Peter Laces. That's Chad Mathis. That's Chris Wright. You can't be wrong if it's Chris Wright. I like that. I think I stole that from Billy or something back. It's gotta be right. It ain't wrong. It ain't wrong. He ain't wrong. It's gotta be right. Okay. We hear this in after party, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, I have to switch guitars. I don't oh, you know. Should I just play it on this one? Go for it, man. Cool. All right, well, we're going to do this song on this guitar. So, this one has audience participation. You ready? Okay. There's clapping and there's singing. You don't have to do both. You can choose one or the other. Well, it depends on what side of the room you're on. No, we're not going to do that. That's fine. This is too complicated. <laughs> do whatever you want. Things will get better. Believing is the first step. Things will get better. Believing is the first step. It's believing, by the way, not believing. Not, not leaving. <laughs> We're going to write a parody of that, though. So that's your part yeah. towards the end. Or you can do it whenever. You just feel free to sing and... But we're, we're going to play a little faster than that. Oh, yeah, we're going to do it faster than that. You're right. That was really, that was really slow. That was the instructional tempo. Yeah, that was the instructional tempo. But you just will pick it up. I always do that. Okay. You guys ready? That's how we do it. Chick it, chick it. One, two, one, two. When I was 12, I tried to play the saxophone. I thought I'd never stop the squeaking. I moan and roam.
singing and clapping. Thank you, thank you so much for being here. Seriously, this has been so much fun. We are so grateful to Tim and Zach and everyone at the Sound Possessions and the Longmont Public Media people for hosting this space. And gosh, you know, I don't even know what else to say. I, I think we'd say uh, it's Chad Mathis on the basis. Oh yeah, so yet again, Chad Mathis on the basis. If it ain't wrong, it's Chris Wright on the drums. Mr. Peter Lasis on the electric guitar. The other electric guitar. The electronic guitar. And for everybody, Teresa Storch, everybody. Teresa Storch. Thank you all so much. Oh, thank you so much. One more. One more. We're supposed to go party now. Uh, it's, up, it's up to, well, it's up to the tip. I don't know. What else? I mean, they want to go to the after party. You guys want to go to the after party? You want us to play one more song? We have one more. Okay. One more. What do you guys want to do? Time the jello? What's up? Can you time the jello? Since we didn't do that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's another dance number. You can get up and dance. Oh, we didn't practice. Time is yelling. Time is yelling. There it is. And I'll just do it on. Can I do that? Can I do that on electric? Of course. Do you want to? I don't normally. No, no, no. All right, so this is a dance number. If you want to dance, there's like space right here. I don't know. Around the chairs is fine. Yeah, you can stand. High places. I don't know if I have a story about this song. Two, three, four. <laughs> <laughs> Time is yelling. Clockwise, best come spin with me All that matters Turn off your mind, stop the chatter
Thank you very much. We love you, Longmont! Ah. You're like such a rock star. Aren't these guys awesome, though? I really, really, really love this band. I'm so, so, so grateful for them also. So 